In this video, we're going to take a look at the construction of my Bentleyville yard. We're going to raise some elevations. We're going to paint and ballast some track. We're going to put in some cool LED lighting effects and even make and set a whole bunch of totally cool details. If you like what you see by the time we're done, make sure to subscribe and welcome to It's My Railroad. Hey everybody, welcome back to my hobby room, to the Brownsmith Railroad and to the Bentleyville yard, ready to be put into operation. I can't wait to show you how I did all of this. It's pretty fun stuff, at least where I'm at. But before we do, I want to give a shout out to what may be our newest, youngest, and most faithful subscriber. And that's my grandson, Bennett. I had that little guy over here yesterday and he could not get enough of Pops Monterero. Matter of fact, even after I shut the locomotives off because they needed a rest, he was like, Pops, can you turn the train back on? I'm like, no, son, they, uh, they need to sleep. So anyway, shout out to you, Bennett. Thanks for watching so many of Pops' videos and uh, I hope you grew up to be a regular guy on a railroader, just like me. But let's move on to an introduction of some of the cast here in the yard. To start off with, this is my yard tower. I scratch built that for the old layout and I finished it for this yard. I got some lighting in there. I got some faux carpeting in there. I got some people and some computer displays. Looks pretty cool on the layout. And now there's somebody to watch the yard. Behind that is a state line general store that I raised up in elevation so I could fit a locomotive in there. This is a place where we do some overhauls of locomotives. I got some details back in there. Again, LED lighting. Uh, that's a pretty cool deal. Right next to that, kind of in front of it, is my fueling depot. I bought some tanks and some cranes and some stuff, and I sort of scratch built slash kit bashed this facility. I think it makes a really great detailed addition to the layout. Next to that is my two stall maintenance facility. This is light maintenance. This is modeled after a prototype at the UP Colton Yard. It's a real place. And uh, I did the best I could to represent their version only mine is significantly smaller. Behind that is my old fruit packing plant. I repurposed that here to be a machine shop where they do machining stuff for the railroad and uh, talk about repurposing. That's pretty cool. Right next to that is a repurposed warehouse from the old uh, port that I had here. That's where we keep just miscellaneous parts for the yard as well as stuff for use in maintenance of way. There's a few more things I'll show you as we move forward, but for right now, let's just get to work on building this yard. If you'll remember from my last video, I raised up some of the elevations here at the yard. I did that by taking some thin strips of extruded foam board and cutting them to fit. And then I glued them down with construction adhesive. Where I did the grade crossing, I cut the pieces a little thicker and put a bevel on the outside edge and then I glued those down. The idea being that once that dries, I can sand it to shape and uh, put sort of a taper in it. And all in all, it made a pretty effective grade crossing. Once I had all that down and the adhesive had a chance to set up, I took a coarse sanding sponge and I just lightly sanded over the whole thing. In spite of my best efforts, some of the pieces of the extruded foam board were a little thicker or there was an edge there and I just kind of wanted to smooth all of that out. After doing that and to protect the track, I just masked it all off. Now in the past you've seen me just say whatever with masking and just do the step that comes after this, which is the joint compound. But I really didn't want to sit there picking drywall compound off my track. So I used the masking tape. Then I just took some regular drywall joint compound and I tried to put it on as thin as I can because of the seams between the extruded foam board. If I put on too thick, it's going to form cracks and not the cool cracks that we want. It's going to form crap cracks, if you know what I'm saying. So I put on as thin as I could. Back here at the grade crossing, I just pulled that joint compound straight across the tracks to make my grade crossing. I just used up uh, some old wheels from a rail car to run in there to make sure that I still had flange ways. Once that had a chance to dry, I hit it lightly again with my sanding sponge and put one more thin layer on, a skim coat, if you will. Let that dry and then just gently sanded it again. Now it's time to get down to putting in some features and painting it. Now a section of this is concrete, a section of this is asphalt. So for the concrete, I wanted to be close to realistic. So I basically took my X-Acto knife with a very sharp blade on it and my straight edge, I sort of eyeballed it but I cut some control joints 
into the slab. I just cut right through the dry drywall joint compound. In some cases, it was pretty thin and cut right into the styrofoam, but it really didn't matter because the net effect is it came out the way I wanted. For the painting, I used steel gray acrylic paint to paint all the concrete areas. I started by edging where the concrete met the asphalt, then just squirted out a bunch of paint and went to town. After that, I decided to paint all the landscape areas brown using this Valspar flat interior paint. I did the same thing. I edged along where the asphalt goes, and then I just painted all the brown stuff brown. Then after that, I used black to paint the road. Once that painting was done, I went through and I used my patented speed scenery technique to put the basic ground cover in in the yard. After that, I went through and I painted and ballasted the track. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I've got a bunch of videos on painting and ballasting track. Uh, just to be thorough, though, I'll give you some highlights, but one thing I'll tell you right out of the shoot is a lot of times I've used and people will use railroad tie brown paint. And I got to tell you something, it doesn't look railroad tie color to me at all. Uh, at least not the railroad ties where I live. So here's what I like to do. I'll take some raw umber acrylic paint and some burnt sienna acrylic paint and mix them together to make a brown that's just got a hint of red in it. That does a couple of things. One is it kind of gives the ties kind of the look I've got around here. Second of all, places on the track, the rails, where it's a little too thin, what it, it does is it kind of makes it look like the rails are rusty right there. Kind of, you don't look too close. Here's another tip, <clears throat> the InScale Railroad. Uh, on YouTube videos, people zoom right in, show you the detail, man. It's totally awesome. Uh, most viewers stand way back here and look at the railroad. And so if it ain't exactly quite right, no one's gonna see it, baby. It just looks good enough for the regular guy. Ballasting the track is not rocket science either. I basically just put some ballast in a little cup and uh, drop it down on there, then use my finger for sort of the base pass. Then I use two things, a very soft brush to sort of brush that and sculpt it the way I want it. And then I use a stiffer brush to go along the edges and just knock off, knock away all the ballast I don't want up next to the railroad. Come the end of the day, from a regular guy perspective and from a distance, it looks pretty good. So once all that ballasting was done, I went through and I put in the rest of the ground cover. Now, here's the deal. I've done this in so many videos. I'd rather not invest time showing you the techniques right now. Not only that, they are not rocket science, all right? But something I do want to show you is this tunnel portal back here. This tunnel is where my interchange track sort of leaves and goes into the rest of the world and then uh, brings cars back to me here on the Brownsmith Railroad. Well, as you can see, you can see right through it, just to the back of the garage, and that doesn't work for me. So I took some foam core and just hogged out some pieces that then I hot glued together and spray painted flat black. And you can see when I set it back down in here, now when you look through that tunnel, it's just black. It's just dark back there. It's like, it goes to nowhere. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now let's get on to the details. To start with, I took these Walther's Cornerstone InScale track bumpers. They come yellow and don't look too bad except they look like toys. So I took some diluted black acrylic paint and just washed all over them. After applying this effect, you know, they're not rusty or anything. That's not the effect I was going for, but they do look grimy. They do look like they've been sitting on in a rail yard for a while and they work for me. Installing the track bumpers was really not rocket science either. All right, since I used diluted white glue to glue down the uh, ballast, all I had to do was take some 70% isopropyl alcohol, resaturate the area to reactivate the glue. Then I pressed the bumper down onto the track and then hit the whole thing again with more diluted white glue and boom, track bumpers installed. And by the way, in testing yard ops, I've bumped into them. They stay, they don't bump off the track. I'm pretty happy with this method. With those first details in, I figured it was time to install the structures and all of them have LED lighting. So what I had to do is I had to drill a hole through the layout in some cases through the base of the model. In this case, it got just a little bit hairy. Luckily, I was able to pop that hole without damaging 
the model. Then, as you would expect, I fished the wires down, set the tops of the structures or the entire structure on the layout, made it up underneath, and then boom, I have lighting in my structures and it lights up all the details and it looks so cool. Very excited to keep going. Let's do that, shall we? Let's keep going. To add a little more interest to the scene, I decided to take some dwarf signals and put them right outside the opening to each of these service bays. Uh, indicating red means don't come in, there's a locomotive here. Green means come on in, it's all good. Again, not rocket science, it was a simple matter to drill a hole through the layout, push the wires, push the dwarf down in there, then I made it up to the same circuit I've got all the rest of the lighting on, flip the switch and boom, I've got red lights and green lights. Uh, I spaced them about 10 feet away from the rail and on the right hand side. I think that's pretty close to prototypical. And then I pulled them away from the structure far enough where my drill chuck didn't hit my structure and just chuck it. Now for my maintenance away yard, I wanted to feature some pre-assembled sections of track, just like you'd see in the real world. So I took some flex track and I measured out 40 feet and cut myself a number of sections of that. Then I cut off the extraneous tie at the end and aligned the rail so about the same amount was sticking out of both sides. After that, I took some super glue and put it down on top of the rail spikes to hold the railroad ties in place because in the next step, we're gonna cut out the plastic between the railroad ties and that lets those railroad ties just go wherever they wanna go and I wanna keep them kind of straight. So by putting them on there, it kind of holds them in place. Then I went through the process of cutting out those extraneous pieces of plastic, I gotta tell you. This is a labor of love. It takes a great deal of time and effort. It's tedious, but the net effect is worth it, especially when you can't even tell that I did it from where I'm standing right now. <laughs> anyway, once that was done, I super glued those sections of track together. And then I used that same color of paint that I used to paint the track out on the branch line. Although I wasn't so worried about getting it on top of the railheads because no trains have traveled over this track, so it's not gonna be all shiny on top. Once that was done, I super glued it right down to my maintenance away yard. I also made a couple of 20 foot sections and glued them in. I made some rail sections and put on some sleepers and I glued those in. And then I got these bundle O ties here. <laughs> one of them's banded, one of them's not because it's missing a tie or two. Glued those in. And then for the fun of it, I just glued in these crates. I don't know what's in them. They're just taking up space in my rail yard, in my uh, maintenance away yard. I kind of like the way it looks though. Now, what would a maintenance away yard be without a stockpile of ballast? I gotta tell you something, I added some. Best ballasting ever done, most fun too because I don't really care. It's just a big pile of ballast anyway. <laughs> I started just sprinkling the ballast onto the maintenance away yard in piles as if a dump truck just backed in there and dumped it off. Uh, it did reveal there was a hole right through the layout, right there. So I took a piece of uh, paper towel, stuffed it in there, poured some more ballast on there. Then did just like you do if you ballasted your track. I put some isopropyl alcohol down on there and uh, some uh, diluted white glue down on there to hold everything in place. And I have some more details I put up in there. I won't go into great detail about, but I really like the way my maintenance of way yard turned out, but there's more to it than that. Let's look at what's next. For the other section of the maintenance of way yard, I glued in a couple of spare cross bucks in case somebody knocked one over with a car. I glued in a spare dwarf signal. I glued in some signal shelters and then just some wheel sets that I had lying around that I just rusted the snot out of. I glued all that in there to add some more detail. Now we're gonna get to the piece that finally showed up. I had all this done and it finally showed up because I ordered it at the last minute. But anyway, let's take a look at this fuel depot I built over here. Now here's the deal. I couldn't find an in-scale fuel depot uh, anywhere on the internet that really looked like what I was trying to get done. Matter of fact, there's just basically crap out there for in-scale fuel depots. So here's what I did. I bought this set of fuel pumps from Showcase Miniatures. I bought these Snyder fuel cranes from American Limited and two horizontal fuel tanks from Bar Mills. Now here's why I'm saying I did a little uh, kit bashing, a little scratch building. 
is the tank and the fill tube at the top as well as the cradle from the original structure. And even though it came with a catwalk, it needed more. So I used some wood and scratch built this platform and these legs to support it. I went ahead and used the ladder that came with the kit way over here at the support. Then I added a bunch of handrails because this thing did not come with handrails and I don't want my little workers falling to their doom. Finally, on the back, I took some O2O styrene rod, bent it and glued it into shape to make these fill tubes. Once all that was done, I made some secondary containment for the tanks and then I primered everything. Then I painted all that and I glued it in and this is what I came up with. And you know, with all that in, it looks pretty awesome. I went through and added a bunch more details, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. If you wanna stick around, I'm gonna just give you some beauty shots of this thing. You can see where I put in a dumpster and some forklifts and stuff like that. But if, uh, if you've seen enough already, I man, I sure appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed working on this project. It's my first fully scenic yard. I'm so excited about it. So thanks for being here today. If you want to stick around for the beauty shots, but if not, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, my name is Steve Brown and rail on my friends.